My name is Carola Suarez Orozco. I am a professor of human development and psychology at the University of California in Los Angeles. Today, in the United States, 25% of all children are the children of immigrants. By that, I mean they are either born in another country or their parents are born in another country. And that number is projected to go up to 30% by 2050. Now, this is not just a, you know, an issue in the United States. This is an issue in all post-industrial nations. So how we uh, help these young people uh, adapt, integrate, thrive, is an issue that concerns all uh, post-industrial nations. So that is the issue that I uh, think a lot about and have been thinking about for the last 25 years. So a study that I did uh, and led is a study where we followed 400 uh, immigrant young people, newcomers, who were on average 12 years old for a period of five years. They came from five different places, Haiti, Mexico, China, the Dominican Republic, and several countries in Central America. And we tried to understand how they uh, adapted with a real focus on schools, because schools are, after all, a place where uh, if they do well, they're likely to thrive. And if they don't, they are likely not to do well in the new society. So we uh, interviewed them, interviewed their parents, interviewed the teachers, and uh, collected a, a lot of data to, uh, you know, to try to understand how they did. And we found that while some of them did extraordinarily well, in fact, surpassing their peers, all too many of them uh, started out doing quite well. They had a lot of hopes and, and dreams. Uh, by the 30 of the study, they began to uh, disengage and do quite poorly. And so we tried to understand how we could account for that. And we found that um, there are lots of issues, uh, you know, including issues that be like long-term family separations and complicated reunifications and um, you know, poor neighborhoods that they were attending. Schools ended up being one of the biggest predictors. And the, the quality of the schools they were attending, the kinds of uh, educations they were receiving, the way they were treated by teachers. Right after I did that study, I worked with colleagues to try to understand um, what kinds of schools did a really good job with uh, integrating students. Because what one of the things we learned is, there are some really wonderful schools, but there are a lot of schools who do a bad job. And so it became very easy to name what doesn't work. It was harder to understand what does work. So we uh, went to Sweden, and we went to uh, New York, and we picked out a few model schools. And we really tried to pick out the kinds of things that made a difference. Um, and so schools that, uh, and what, you know, one of the things we learned was, First, you have to do exactly what you'd want for your children or my children. So at a, at a very basic level, schools that were rigorous, that had high level curriculum, where there were good relationships between teachers and students, um, those, you know, that the, the, the kind of good schools is a basic fundamental uh, common denominator. But then on top of that, schools that did a good job with immigrant kids dealt with the emotional uh, kinds of issues that kids who had been separated from their parents for long periods of time had. Uh, if they were refugee kids, the, the, kind of the traumas that they were dealing with, the issues of uh, entering a new land and having to adapt. So they dealt with the whole child. And then they uh, involved the parents. Uh, they uh, valued the, the, the second language. They allowed the second language to be a scaffold for learning the new language. And then there was intensive language, uh, second language learning. So, you know, it was a, a really a wraparound kind of uh, service that made a big difference for the, the, the kids in these kinds of schools. So that would be my recommendation for what we need to be doing.